the devil whispered, You cannot withstand the storm. The warrior replied, I am the storm. You are a warrior. You will get through the storm. You will show the storm who's boss. You will show everyone you are stronger than all things that have hurt you. You are stronger than your past. You are stronger than the challenges coming in your future. You will tell yourself, I don't invite life's challenges, but I don't back down from them either. I know we all face tough times. I know I'm not exempt from life's struggles, but I know I am strong. I know this will pass. I know there will be better days, but only if I keep fighting like a warrior, fighting with all my heart, the heart of a lion. The strength I have is like no other. I am not a survivor, I am a warrior. I don't survive, I thrive. I can do this and I will get through this. Warriors are built from the struggle, formed from pain, strengthened by adversity. Embrace your challenges and push through them like the warrior you are. You are stronger than your past and you are stronger than the challenges coming in your future. The strength I have is like no other. I am not a survivor. I am a warrior. I don't survive. I thrive. I can do this and I will get through this. I make the best of bad situations. I see the opportunity in the struggle. I grow strength from my hardship. I am thankful for my hard times. They make me stronger. I am thankful for the pain. It makes me raise my game. I am grateful for the worst of time. It ensures my story will be a great one. From zero to hero. From nothing to something. From the bottom to the top. Here I come. Boom, 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 kaboom, kaboom. I hope you guys are ready, man. I hope you are ready because we are in a war. Guess what, though? We win. That's right. We win. And I am so excited about what God is doing because God is releasing new books. He's releasing new people to go out and to speak some good news. Good news. But let's say, let's see what good news is in the chat. So good morning to my chat. Ooh, Shelly girl's the first one here. Good morning. Good morning, my Shelly. Good morning to Laura. Good morning to Dee. Hey, Bill. How the heck are you? Good morning. Good morning, Linda Sue. Linda Sue is over on the Twitch. Linda Sue is over on the Facebook. There she is. Linda Sue is everywhere. She is everywhere, man. She is everywhere. It's a good Johnny Cash song. Good morning to Irene. Good morning to Heidi. Hi, Pat. How are you? Please make sure that you like and share the broadcast. Because it is going to be power packed. That's right. Because we have an invitation. Do you know that? And God always invites his people. He does. He does not just demand. He invites. Because he is so, look, he's polite. God is polite. So anybody who thinks, well, God made me do it. No, he gave you an invitation. You just did it. I'm just saying. So good morning. Good morning. Please make sure that you like and share. We're going to wait just a couple of seconds. There we go. Good morning to Maggie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing? We're almost done. We're almost through the week. Tomorrow's Friday. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a broadcast tomorrow. I'm going to say because I'm going to, I'm going to be traveling today. So there you go. I'll be in uh, North Carolina tomorrow. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it is. um, And it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be kind of, so I'll be praying my way down to North Carolina. I'm going to be telling those storms to get out my way. Get out my way. Okay, guys, it's time for a little bit of coffee. Who's ready for a nice little coffee break? There we go. Coffee. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. And thank you again, Kim Florida Patriot, for my cup. I love my cup. It's so pretty. People send me the prettiest cups. Really, really love them. Okay, so. I have a new guest for you guys, and you are going to love her. It's going to be, we are going to have so much fun. But my guest is coming all the way from um, from Texas. So let's give her a big, great big yee And please welcome Sunny Wessel to Crown Shots. Good morning, Sunny. Welcome. It is early out in Texas, huh? 
Yes. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to see what more people will be popping in, but uh, I'm so excited to have you. Any friend of CJ's is a friend of mine. CJ Wheeler connected us and I am so, so excited to hear your story, your testimony, and most importantly, to talk about your book. Check this book out, guys. This book, or it is. It says God's special invitation. How will you RSVP? You know, and it, it's so funny because we have become into a culture where a lot of people just show up. They don't RSVP. Just saying. <laughs> they do. It's like, I really wish you would let me know that you were coming. Oh, well, especially the younger people. So I think that that, that also shows about honor and respect just in the title alone. So, okay, so why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely. I am uh, a believer since I was five years old. It's a wonderful experience that I had with the Lord at age five because my parents had just been dramatically saved. I had seen a transformation in their lives. We started going to church for the very first time. And, uh, because I have a sis uh, sister too, a younger sister. And that's when I heard about Jesus and uh, his love for me. And uh, and I, even though I was only five, I knew what disobedience was. I'd been in trouble before <laughs> and uh, with my parents. And so I, I knew I needed a savior. And I, but I thought I was too little uh, to respond to the altar call at church. Um, I uh, was crying in the car on the way home from church and uh, my parents inquired, what, what's bothering you, Sonny? And I told them, well, I wanted to give my heart to Jesus, but, and they said, well, why didn't you go forward and respond? Uh, and I said, well, I thought I was too little. <laughs> so my mom knelt with uh, me beside my bed that night and led me in the prayer to invite Jesus into my heart. The most special invitation of all Jesus gives to us is to belong to him, to know him and let him lead the way. And that's what I did and it transformed my life. Uh, and I started seeking him uh, with all my heart because that's what I saw my parents doing. That's what I saw the church doing. And that's how the Lord was drawing me. So I've had a, a, an, an exciting journey. Uh, I've learned to hear his voice over my years through living through uh, the different stages of life. We're all in different stages. Some of us are students and some of us are working and some of us are retired. You know, some of us are single, some of us are married and uh, some of us are widowed and some of us are divorced. We're all in different stages of life. But uh, I, in every stage of my life, I found God was with me. I found God was for me and that uh, God was allowing me through the circumstances of my life to learn to hear his voice and to recognize him. And the more I got into his word and, and began to check to see if what I thought I was hearing lined up with the scriptures, uh, the more confident I became that I was hearing his voice and he was leading me. Because God gives us invitations all the time. Uh, some are special for us. But if we don't know how to hear his voice, then uh, we might miss them. And uh, I know I've missed some invitations, uh, both in the natural and both from the Lord. And I just wanted to, every invitation from God and every invitation from others is worthy of a reply, of response. And I don't want to miss them. I don't want you to miss them. And uh, God nudged me one time when I was riding on the back of a motorcycle with my husband. I was just spending time with him, praising him for what I was enjoying in nature and creation and his wraparound presence. And uh, God nudged me that I was going to write a book. And uh, over a long period of time, it came to realize that that book was this, God's special invitation 
how would you RSVP? And I have a website, I'd spent uh, sunnysbook.com, where you can uh, get download the first chapter of the book. So it's been an exciting journey with him to uh, learn to hear his voice through work, marriage, family, uh, work, illnesses, all the different stages of life. And I don't want to miss anything from God, and I don't want you to miss anything from God. So come on book so you can learn to recognize those special invitations for you and respond to them mm. well you know and i i think that the the fact that so many people have they're so busy with their life that they they don't stop they don't recognize those invitations because it starts off scripturally it starts off with an invitation it starts off with jesus saying to the disciples follow me that's an invitation to yes. come mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so throughout throughout scriptures there was always that invitation that god always he he would he would encourage man to have a conversation he would have a um he would encourage man to see things. I mean, we know that it was an invitation to, to see when he was saying to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, tell me what you see. It was an invitation. Hey, yes. come here. And even with the apostle John, where it says, come on up here, let me show you some stuff, right? He's up in heaven. And all of a sudden, John is trans. She, he's translocated into the throne room. And that's where the book of Revelations comes from. So we can see that everything is an invitation. And even the crucifixion, Jesus was invited to do that. And he said, yes. And he said, yes. And he said, yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Now, besides writing books, you also do you do, you do a little bit of um, Bible teaching because it says that, that you've done some Bible Bible studies. So you have created a lot of Bible studies. Now, are you planning on, on going ahead and releasing those and, and putting those out there? Or can people find them on your website? Um, I do have uh, Bible studies that I can uh, conduct at my church and in uh -huh. my neighborhood. Uh -huh. and, uh, I have an upcoming one uh, for my church that uh, I will put on Zoom. And it's all about... Uh, the divine romance God invites Ooh. us to have. Oh, come on, Sunny. Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> yes, yes. And how to how to uh, desire that divine romance and how to deepen that, your romance. You may have already have started down that journey, but you want to deepen it. That's yep. what we're talking about. That's so good. Well, God is, you know, Jesus is coming for a spotless bride. And there, there have been lots and lots of my, I love Song of Songs. I could live in Song of Songs because Song of Songs is that that's, that's, that's the bridal chamber. I call it the bridal chamber book. Like that's, <laughs> that's where you're going to go to when you really want to get to know who you are as a bride. And that's for both men and women, because we have to remember that we're all a part of the bride. We say that we're like connect the dots. So it's like dot, dot, dot. And we just start connecting and then we get to see an image of the, of the bride. So, yeah. But so you've been, so this, this intimacy now have you, because I know that, that you've gone through some um, health challenges. Um, yes. And so have you, have you ever had a, an encounter in heaven with, with, Jesus or the Father that um, that that you would like to share? I, my encounters with the Lord have been an awareness of His presence. Yeah, yeah. And, and that and abiding, learning how to uh, used to take me a while to get into His presence. Yeah. To stop the chatter, stop yeah. the noise, and set aside all the distractions. But uh, now I know how because of developing that intimacy with him, uh, I can easily get and quickly get into his presence. Mm. And uh, so that's what my encounters with the Lord have been like. And I knew when I had the battle with cancer in 2013 yeah. mm -hmm. that 
uh, it was not from God. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had to guard my heart from the spirit of fear. And so I guarded my eyes and my ears Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the spirit of fear while I walked through this, focusing on God's love for me. I determined and was very intentional about staying in his presence and in praise and worship Mm. and magnifying him, not the problem. Come on. The problem was temporary and that God already knew the end from the beginning. And I was just following him, walking through that path of healing that I knew he had for me. And I I didn't put him in a box. Mm, Come on. We had to do it. Yes. I I, I received it as finished. I received it as done. And I I experienced the presence of God uh, throughout all the pain and throughout all the... um, side effects <laughs> that I experienced and God just uh, was so near and comforted me and, and gave me peace and assurance in that time in my life. Oh, that's awesome. And you know, when we when we go through these hard times, it's really easy to focus on the, the stuff that we're dealing with as opposed to focus on the author and the finisher of every perfect work because when we i i know i've heard different testimonies of people who have like gone and battled through health issues where all they would do is they would just put the scriptures in front of them they would just they would just speak those scriptures because the enemy would come in and go you know you should really wear that purple dress when you they bury you like that yeah oh no no i i have heard that testimony i think it was by dodi osteen she she basically said that the enemy would say you should really wear that pink dress when they bury you like and she would just be like no i'm not because (laughs) she and she would start saying all of these scriptures and and sometimes that's that's part of our that it's part of our warfare the, the, yes. the scriptures aren't just there to to look at. They're there to use. And especially the scriptures that have been consistent throughout the ages. Because we can look at some scriptures that, that it was spoken in the New Testament. But then we go, hey, wait a second. It was also spoken in the Old Testament too. Because God does not change. He is he will be. And will, he, he was, he is, and will always be. The same. Amen. Amen. Uh, one of the uh, lessons in my book, uh, mm-hmm. there is a collection of devotions, the things God's spoken to me in the uh, quiet place with him. Sure. That's what Jesus did is when he uh, got along with his disciples, they'd ask him questions. And that's when he would explain to them what is the meaning of the, uh, for example, uh, the sower, the parable about the sower and told uh, that the meaning to the disciples. So uh, I really uh, help people uh, recognize the importance of getting along with the Lord and asking him questions and letting him guide you and lead you. And one of them is talking about taking the word of God, one of the devotions, uh, as your sword of the spirit and how God made that alive to me uh, when I was listening to the scriptures in Luke 1, 37 and uh, the New Living Translation. And uh, it said it different from the way I had memorized it in the King James. We know it in the King James as uh, no word from God is void of power. And I believed that. But what I heard in the New Living Translation is that no word from God will ever fail. Ooh, that's good. And that ignited a fire in my soul, Mm -hmm. I felt felt the Holy Spirit nudge me and say, how would you live if you believed that no word from God will ever fail? Oh, okay, Sonny, we have to do a bomb. So hold on (laughs) one second. I'm sorry. I, I warned her. I did. I warned her. Come on, come yes. on. Yes. Uh, words from God that the Holy Spirit 
enlightens for you are mm. full of life. Yes. They lead to Jesus. And every time you find Jesus, you found the fountain of life. And that's what happened within me. Uh, I uh, The fountain of life rose up within me. I thought, if I believed that no word from God would ever fail. Come it, on. It would be a sword of the spirit that I would use in warfare. Come on. To defeat the lies of the enemy and Come declare on. the uh, the victory of the Lord and see it manifest. So, so good. Okay. So we know it says, you know, when we, when we really look and we see, you know, that we have the full armor of God, it talks about it in Ephesians 6. And one of the things that says that we, that we wear the helmet of salvation. And I really, I see the helmet of salvation. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to go a little like uh, sci-fi with you, but <laughs> there was, um, there was something that it, like if you look at um, different um, uh, uh, television shows where they say like the aliens are coming and they put a piece of, of uh, metal on their head or they put tinfoil, that's where the tinfoil hats just came from, right? Because they said, I don't want them to read my mind. I don't want those aliens to read my mind. But when we put on that, that helmet of salvation, it shuts out that the enemy can't get in. It's the, it's the same thing. The enemy can't get in when we have that helmet of salvation that reminds us of who we are, that we keep saying, no, this is who I am. I have a crown. My crown says that I belong to the most high God. My, my crown says that I am a daughter. I am a son. And as we start to remind ourselves, wait a second, I walk in victory. I have favor. Hold on a second. It kind of shifts and changes how we start to approach problems. Definitely. Uh, the scripture says, and along with that, is to let this mind be in you. Mm. That's a key word. You is the subject. We have to do the letting. God invites us so to good. have the mind of Christ. And we Come on. Let that mind of Christ dwell within us. But by having the word of God stored in our hearts richly so that when the Holy Spirit wants to bring up something to your remembrance, <laughs> he, there's uh, the word of God to quicken you and, and apply to the situation. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So, we, so we have all of these tools, but so many people fail to use that invitation and they go about trying to, to you know, try to find something, try to, you know, rustle up their own vittles, so to speak. And God's like, I have a full banquet for you that I've invited you to partake of. People are trying to find all their pennies and God's like, wait a second, I've invited you. I have a, I have cattle on a thousand hills. The gold and the silver are mine. What you doing over there? And so, so many people are like, oh, but I have to do it my way. I, it has to be my way. And God's like, no, I've invited you. If you do it my way, my way is a better way. But yet so many people, they, they, I guess they miss that invitation. It must've gotten lost in their uh, email. <laughs> <laughs> well, there've been times when I've missed invitations from God. There've been times where where I said, no, uh, just like the children of Israel did, mm -hmm. that there's no life in that. Mm -hmm. no, uh, God brought the children of Israel to the uh, border of the uh, promised land at Kadesh Barnea. And he said, enter, you know, and take the land. It's yours. I have given it unto you. Right. But they said, no, there's giants and we can't go. <laughs> Wait, now, wait a second. Now, somebody just did this. I, I was just hearing this about the giants, that, that not everybody saw the giants. And they said that the giants were going to destroy them. They didn't know. They just assumed. And sometimes when we assume, we make a huge mistake. Yes. Because we don't have the full information. But God does. Yes, yes. Well, as you know, because they refused that invitation they went into the wilderness for 40 years, living a, a barely existent kind of life. Totally. Uh -huh. so that whole generation passed. 
I don't want to miss the things God has prepared for me. He has prepared things for each one of us. We, we're we here by divine appointment, and we have a divine assignment, and he we have been divinely empowered, and he invites us to let him lead the way. And that's what I'm excited to help people be able to feel confident that they're hearing God's voice and they were responding to God's invitation. Or if they miss it, to pick themselves uh, back up by asking forgiveness and thanking the Lord for re restoring them. Because the scripture says, a righteous man will fall seven times. Come on. Up. So it's, we're all going to miss it sometime or other. And, and But we can uh, arise and go forth in the name of the Lord. Come on. Come on. And that's that's the thing so many times that, you know, we might miss it because we're human. Hello? David missed it. And David was pursuing the heart of God. Yes. You can see how many times people, be, Peter missed it. Peter missed it. He was with Jesus and he still missed it. He still missed it because we are human. And sometimes our flesh gets in our way. That's why we kind of have to burn it all off. I'm just saying, we got to go into the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and let that stuff just burn off, right? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. So well, go ahead, what were you going to say? I hope people go to my website, sunnysbook.com or to Amazon and get God's special invitation. How will you RSVP? Because it will uh, enable you and strengthen you and encourage you. There's so many benefits of having intimacy with God that that should give you a big huge clue by how hard the devil fights are having a close relationship with the Lord. 100%. And the one thing that I do know is that if you're doing something right, you're, you're about to get into a fight. I'm just saying. <laughs> If you're doing something right, you about to get into a fight because the enemy is always going to, to try to block that next level. He's going to stand in front of that door so you can't get to it. And who is the door? Jesus. Jesus is the door. There is no other door. There is no other door. There's only Jesus. And we go through Jesus because it says through Christ, we can do all things. It doesn't say that we can do it through ourselves. It doesn't say that we can. No, it says through Christ. So if we always look, if we look at, at these doors that, that are in front of us, okay, those, those could be the doors of opportunity, but they have to say Jesus on them because <laughs> not every good thing is a God thing. Yes. And that's the discernment I think we need right now to know what invitations to accept. Definitely. And, uh, so it, it's a wonderful experience uh, as we grow, grow in him to uh, accept those invitations and see God do mighty things in, in us and through us. And I've been blessed to experience that. Yeah. And I have your website. It's scrolling on the bottom of the screen. It's uh, sunnysbooks.com. So you can, you guys can go over there. And I, I just want to say that there's some I think there's some more books in you, Sunny. Yes, this is the first in the series. Yeah. The second uh, will be issued or published, I think, uh, by summertime. Okay. And, uh, that, in that series, we're talking about the favor and the fear of the Lord. Come on. Each, each one is independent. Yeah. But they're all building to go someplace. Mm. Third one is uh, uh, on... Uh, the, the prize of our high calling, which is Christian virtue, hmm. the importance of that, uh, and where we're building to and going to, uh, finally, it's the fourth one. It's demonstrating the authority and justice of God. Okay, that one, that that's going to be a big thing because people don't understand the justice and they don't, they definitely don't understand authority. Everybody, I believe that they, People pray for more power, but what they really need to pray for is more authority because authority gives you the power. <laughs> yeah. And that authority comes from having time you've spent with the Lord. That's what happened with the disciples when the, the, the uh, religious leaders 
were trying to arrest, were arresting them and uh, threatening them. They saw that they were ordinary people. And that's what God uses. It's mm -hmm. ordinary people. I'm a wife. I'm a homemaker. Uh, I have children, grandchildren, just an ordinary person. But God uses ordinary people. Uh, but that these uh, religious leaders uh, saw that these men had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They had authority. That's what happened with Peter and John when they came as they normally did to the beautiful gate at the time of prayer, they recognized there was an opportunity. Jesus was inviting this lame man to be made whole, at, but they had something within them. They, and that you get that authority within you by spending time in God's word and in his presence. Woo! Let's just kick that cow. Let's just do that. Let's just get rid of wor works. It's on. Mm -hmm. It's never about works, right, Sonny? It's about relationship. Yes, yes. So when when we see when we see that, and you know the the thing is that there were more. There were twelve disciples, but not all twelve disciples got to see everything. Not all 12 disciples got to go to the mountain of transfiguration. Not all 12 disciples got to hear the deeper, the deeper meaning because Jesus would go out and he would preach to the masses, but then he would come back and he would preach to his disciples. But then a third time he would come back and he would just speak to Peter, James, and John. Yes, <laughs> they were his closest. They were his closest. And that's how we want to be. We want to be the closest to Jesus. And that's why I love that you're going to be doing this teaching on, on, on intimacy. Into me see. <laughs> you know? I think people uh, don't recognize that this intimacy is intentional. Mm -hmm. It. We tend to approach things that, well, if God wants me to have it, I'll have it. Can we kick a cow on that, please? <laughs> Seriously, that's one of that's like a pet peeve of mine. Because even the even the guy who he said, if it's your will, he goes, what is it you want? He goes, if it's your will, I want to to be healed, and he goes. It is. And yet so many people don't believe that God's will is to heal. So I'm sorry, go ahead. I just, it's, it, it's a little bugging me. Yes, right. So we can have as close of a relationship with Jesus as we desire. We have to be the ones, the Lord will draw us, but we have to nurture that desire. We have to, because the scripture says that the way is narrow. And you have to press into it. That means you have to press past your fears, your doubts. You press past the chatter, the crowds. And you, there, in fact, the scripture says it's the violent who see it, at, who take the kingdom of God and the presence of God as their vital necessity. They take it by force. That's right. It's that hunger and thirst for it. No. What is vital to us is air, oxygen, water, light, that we have food. There's vital things. You won't, if you're cut off from any of those for any period uh, too long a time, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. you're cut off from the presence of God because of busyness, because of being choked down with the cares of life. Come on. We're going to die we're, and we'll be that branch that gets cut off and thrown into the fire. So th this intimacy with God is achievable. That's good news. You can have it. You ha and, and it, but it's something for you to desire, something for you to cultivate and nurture by spending time with the Lord and in his word. That's so good. That's so good. I love that because everything is a very even playing field for God. He doesn't, he doesn't exalt man above other men. 
I'm just going to say that he, God doesn't, God does not have favorites. There was actually a Neil Simon play called God's favorite there. God does not have favorites. Everybody is very equal. However, your relationship with God is different from anybody else's. You are never, ever, 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 ever going to have the same relationship that somebody else has with God because you're not them. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that theirs is better. It's just that theirs is different. So we, we all have the opportunity. We've all been invited. In fact, I love the scripture, Sonny, where it says that we are to go boldly. We are to go boldly into the throne room of God. Amen. And so when we're going boldly, you don't go into a place boldly unless you know that you're going to be welcome. Because otherwise you won't get killed. <laughs> right? Yes. So when we're when you're talking about this, this level of intimacy, this is something I really believe right now. I think that this is the most important, like of everything else. Like we're seeing, we're seeing all the the yuck in the world. But the but this isn't what your book is, it's an invitation to get to know him. He already knows you. Now you get to know him. Yes, yes. God's plan and design is for each of us to become carriers of his glory. Come on. And that's what I spend uh, almost 10% in these devotions are because I'm so intrigued of what God was meaning and saying to me about uh, carrying his glory. And that's what he invites us to do. But the word of God, let me caution us says for those who would draw near to me must regard me as holy. Ooh, come on. Yes, yes. You go boldly before the throne of grace because of what Jesus has done for you, but it's not without an awe yeah. and regard that God is holy. Yes, come on. He's set apart. He's not the same as you and me. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, and you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, because as soon as you said that his glory, I think about the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Yes. That's now, what I'm thinking about. It. Right. Those priests that, that carried the presence of the Lord on his shoulder, on their shoulders. And God wants us to be, each one of us to be carriers of his glory. So in other words, he, God took that box and he broke it. <laughs> when you were saying that earlier, it's like God wants out of the box. God wants his spirit is no longer contained in the Ark of the Covenant. It's now contained in us. Holy Spirit lives and dwells inside of the true children of God. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is so important. And it's an invitation. Yes. Just like salvation, it's an invitation. And it's not a once and done thing. Come on. <laughs> Talk just, about that. Talk about that, Sonny. Because a lot of people think that, oh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, thank. I checked that salvation box. I checked that, uh, that water baptism box. Those are important, each one. I checked that being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I right. checked my box. But it's not once and done. Uh, he's a fountain of life. We're continually being saved. I have been saved. I am being saved. And my body will be saved. Come on. <laughs> yes, yes. Come on. Okay. So, you know, th this is how I always describe, like, that we never get to see the fullness of God. Because even the angels, when they're, when they're going around him and they're saying, holy, holy, holy. It's like, as they come around that corner, it's like they see a new thing and they're like, whoa, holy. And then they come around the other corner and they go, whoa, holy. But, but it's like, we, we look at the names of God and there are so many names of God. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And he is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. And then he is Jehovah Sikinu and he is our banner and Jehovah Nisi is our banner and all of these, all of these things. But if we're not needing healing, do we get to see that part of God? No. Good we don't way. get to see, we don't get to see that in a personal way. We don't get introduced 
to that part of God. So it's like he has so many names that we've yet to encounter. So when we're looking at, at, at who God is, he's like, wait, 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 come on, come, come here, come here. I, I want to tell you about this story. I want to tell you who I am here. I want to tell you who I am as your banner. What is your banner? Because a lot of people don't understand these names, but they were extremely important back then. But what we fail to recognize is that just because it looks like it was back then, it's still important now because we don't fight with flesh and blood. We fight with spiritual things. Definitely. Definitely. Right. Uh, God's invitation to us is through our experiences Come and on. circumstances of life. And we often look at those experiences and circumstances as tests sometimes. Uh, and tests are, are something that we'd rather avoid. <laughs> we'd rather um, not experience a, t a, a test. But I, I've come to recognize that in each test, God wants to, like you were saying, Lisa, he wants to reveal his name. Come on. In each test. It's an opportunity. Uh, so that's why James can say to rejoice and count it all joy when you're in a multitude, diverse kinds of tests and trials and experiences because God is wanting to reveal something to you in each one of those life circumstances. He's been there ahead of you. In Psalms 139, he says that he was overseeing when we were each being knit in our mother's womb and that each one of our days is recorded in his book. Uh, my birth was an answer to prayer. My sister's birth was an answer to prayer because my mother wasn't supposed to be able to have children. So each, per each person is here by God, it's not just a sperm and an egg coming together and, and biology happens. Hold God. on. You're going to get a kick for that. Hold on. You're going to get a kick. That's a good word right there. That's a good word right there. It's not just biology that's happening. Come on. Yes, yes. And so God's been ahead of you and me for each one of our days. And he knows the end from the beginning. He's been the he's been to the finish line and he saw to it that you win. Come on. You believe that in your heart, that his word will never fail. You'll have boldness, you'll have confidence, and you'll you'll be able to go through that test and that trial, knowing that God has provided the way for you to escape. Come on, come on. That's so good. All right. I'm going to give you a boom because that was, I'm just sitting on, I'm still chewing on that. Hold on a second. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. I think that Sonny, I think that people, people are still trying to play church when God is saying, no, I created you to be the church. Well said, well said. Uh, God invites us to have, uh, to, for him to be our wraparound armor. Yes. So about the helmet of salvation and putting on the whole armor. He wants to be our wraparound armor so that we can silence the voice of the enemy. Yes. And defeat him. Yes. 100%. And that's, that's the thing. You know, we, I, I love all the disciples, but one of my favorites is John. Be, now I know that some people, cause it's not, it's never been to, like, it's never really been like written anywhere, but I don't believe personally, I don't believe that the apostle John died. I really don't because they tried to kill him so many times and they couldn't do it because he knew he was loved. And so what they did is they throw him on an island by himself and he has his encounter where he goes up to heaven and he writes the book of Revelation, but it doesn't really say, I think he kind of like, is like Enoch. I think he just like kind of walked with Jesus. And then, I don't know. I, I just, it's just my thing is because when you know, when you know 
deep, 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 deep inside how much you're loved, then you know that it says that that love, that you will never die. That there, and, and when we go back to scripture, Peter says to Jesus, how come he doesn't have to die? He doesn't say, how come he doesn't have to die like me? He says, how come he doesn't have to die? Just something to think about. Yeah. Something I ponder a little bit here and there. Yeah. Well, I, I love John as well, Lisa, uh, because for the same similar reason that he realized how much God loved him. Yes. It's so important to say, Lisa, the disciple, Jesus loves. Heck yeah. I'll take that. Sonny, the si disciple that Jesus loves. And Heck yeah. Looking at people on your. I know. Uh, Linda phone. Jones, the disciple that Jesus loved. And Rebecca, the disciple that Jesus loved. And Shelly, the disciple that Jesus loved. And Kipra, the disciple that Jesus loved. And John. Well, John, <laughs> John, brother, John, the disciple that Jesus loved and Bill, like all of you, all of you. And I, I can only see a, a couple of names right now, but, but every single person, because I love the scripture where it says, for God so loved the world. Yes. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's keep it right. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying a little bit for those who remember, but when we really understand that, when we get that deep, 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 deep in, in our soul, we move and we act differently. Yes. Because with that scripture that says, if God is for you, who could be against you? Yes. Right? And he says again and again, fear not, for I have overcome the world. Come on. He that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on. So right. good. That's so good. And, you know, I think, I think, Sunny, that, that your book, you know, let's just put up, let's just put your book up again so people can see it. Okay. And you guys can get the, the link, God's Special Invitation, How Will You RSVP? And it really is. This is having this kind of intimacy, but isn't it really about having a, a, a conversation? Like he's almost inviting you to have a conversation into his heart to see really how he feels about you. Because once you understand your identity, it's a whole new game. Yes. Well, uh, the way this uh, book is written, it's an exercise in uh, being able to hear God's voice. Oh, come on. I've, I've followed a certain methodology of, for meditation. Maybe there's some in your audience that don't, know how to uh, meditate scripturally. And uh, I learned this from Wayne Cordero, uh, who's a pastor and an author, and he calls it SOAP, scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So mm. that's how these uh, thoughts are laid out. As I would read in God's word or scripture, you know how it'll jump off the page at you sometimes? Sure. The phrase to me, to become entwined with God. Mm -hmm. Oh, the awesome that my life is not just surrounded, but I, it's in mind with him. And I'd meditate on that scripture, and make, write out an observation and how I was going to apply it in my life, how I would live or behave or think differently, and then end it with a prayer. And that's how each devotion is laid out with space for you to answer questions about hearing from God. Come on. I would write questions about that thought of um, being able to uh, become entwined with him, for example. And then you write, have room to write down your answer uh, to those questions. And then there's uh, to conclude with God's invitation for you today about letting your life become entwined with him. Mm. And that threefold chord is strong. <laughs> That's so good. I love that. And you know what I can see? I can see like when um when you dance, like when you're dancing, you become entwined with the person. Yes. It's right? a divine romance, it's divine dance. Yeah. And so like when you're when you're dancing with Jesus, you're entwined with him. Your hands are like this. 
hit, you know, you're close that, you know, there is something that, that there is no, it's not like you're freestyle dancing, but when you're dancing with him, there is a connection. That's, that's kind of how I see that. And that's really what it comes down to. And there's, there's this, there's a song and it says, and he spins around wildly. And I can, right. And I can see him picking people up and just grabbing them and just spinning them wildly as he's so excited that you're, that you're finally starting to understand his heart for you. Oh yes. Uh, and I love it. That's, uh, I recognize that scripture too, and, and how that that's one of the benefits of having intimacy with God is that you begin to feel his heart, you know, because the devil doesn't want you to know how much God loves you. Mm-mm. The devil doesn't want you to know the truth about how he sees you. Uh, and so that's why intimacy with God is so necessary. It's mm. a vital necessity. Absolutely. Well, the enemy wants to keep us as orphans, but and we've been adopted. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. And and somebody who is an orphan, they go off on their own. They do things their own way. They think that they have to, they have to protect themselves. They have to fight for themselves. They have to do all these things because nobody else will. But when you understand the Father, when you understand Jesus, then you're like, wait a hold on. It says. The, my God shall fight for me. Hold, hey. wait, hold on. My God shall provide for me. Wait, my God goes before me. My God is with me. Hope, you know, it changes how you start to do life. Yes, definitely. That's so good. That's so good. And so, so when we, when we're, jur- well, do you journal? Like, do you suggest like journaling, like with God, when you're, when you're doing these exercises? Uh, you were asking me the question, are, are you uh, like, okay. So like in your chapter, you said what you do with soap, right? So you, you do yes, the scripture that's in that pattern, right? So you do the scripture, you do the observation, you do the application, and then you do prayer. So in that prayer time, do you write down the scripture to show you what the Holy Spirit is telling you so you can get the deeper meaning of it? Uh, uh, the scriptures interwoven through the uh, observation and application and the prayer with references. So it's all there. But in the prayer, I'm praying it back to the Father. Ah, That's what we do with God's word. He says, bring words. And he's talking about his word. Yes. His word. When we bring his promises, as you know, Lisa, they get an, an immediate answer from God. We may not get the uh, awareness of that immediate answer, but he says he answers it with a divine yes and amen. That's right. Well, doesn't it say remind me, bring back to my yes, remembrance? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when we, that's one of the, that's one of the things that, like when I pray, when I'm especially if I'm praying for a person, I will use the scripture and I will say it to the Lord. I didn't say this. You said this. You said that I shall lay hands on the sick and they they shall recover. I didn't say this. You said this. So I'm taking that word. I'm taking that word and I'm using that application. I'm standing on it and I will not be moved by it. Amen. Right? So that's, that's kind of, that's how we can use the different scriptures and the promises. See, God does not forget his promises. In fact, it says that his promises, he's wrapped up in his promises. Like, think about that. Like, if we unwrap God, we're going to be unwrapping all these pro- promises. That, that to me, it, that's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So so when you, when you start to, to use, to use that soap method, which I really love is taking that scripture. And I love that how you observe it because like my, my life scripture, for instance, is Ephesians 320. Well, 1920. Now to him who can do exceedingly and abundantly far above all he can ask, think, or imagine through Christ within me. So I think about that scripture. I, I know the scripture and I say to myself, okay, well, who's going to do exceedingly and abundantly? He's going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Yes. It yes. takes that It takes that responsibility off of us and puts it back where it always belonged. Because yes. he wouldn't say it if he wasn't going to do it. That's right. 
right? Yes. Yeah. This is so good. So I was going to ask you, Sunny, um, do you, is there anything that you really feel, especially because of the, the times that we're in, do you feel like there, there's something that, that we may be missing from the father that, well, that can help us? Because of the times that we're in, as you said, Lisa, uh, we want to be strong yes. in the Lord and the power of his might. He commands us to do that. And what he commands us to do or be, he enables us to be and do. And I'm reminded in how in the book of Daniel, it's recorded that they that know their God, that's that intimacy, that your life has become entwined with him. You know his voice. They that know their God shall be what? Strong, shall be strong and do exploits. That's how we're to go forth in Jesus' name, using the word of God as Psalms 149 describes as a sword, executing the judgments of God. They're not our judgments. Healing has been judged by God, and it's been uh, sickness and death has been defeated, and it will be finally defeated. So we learn to use God's word uh, because we know him. And that we know that he stands by his word. Amen. Amen. And that's that right there. People forget that he will stand by his word. And doesn't it say that he stands by and to to see it perform what it's intended to do? Yes, exactly. He watches over he watches it. Watches over it. Thank you. He watches I love over that it. picture uh, of God watching over. It says in Second Chronicles that uh, God is watching over uh, his eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth, what? To show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are fully his. Mm. And that's what this intimacy with God is all about, is having an undivided heart, having mm. this rival love circumcised from our heart. So that in Revelation, it says that the, they that overcome, overcome by what? The blood of the lamb, yep. the word of the Lord, and the... And the they didn't love their own lives. They didn't oh, come love their on. own comforts. They didn't love their own, uh, they weren't protected. They didn't love their own lives unto the death. Mm. Well, you know, look, it says no greater love is there for someone who lays down his life for, for a brother or a sister. That like that's that's the the big thing. And when you become when when you are called into God's army, it ain't about you. It's not about you anymore. Sorry. I mean, for people, people are like, I want to get into ministry because then I'm going to do. Now, it's not about you. It's about him and it's about what he wants to do. And I think that that's, that's truly what, what he, what he talks about because I love in Song of Song how, how she has this encounter. She has encounter with, with the bridegroom. And then there comes a point that she doesn't even care if she dies. That she, because she says, she goes, even like, she goes, please, if you see my beloved, even if he walked away, please tell him, please tell him that how much I loved him. Please tell him, like, even if I perish, just tell him how much I love him. Tell him how important he is to me. And that's, that becomes our heartbeat. Our heartbeat is just like, we just beat like longing and seeking to spend more and more time with him. Everything else just kind of goes away. Everything else just kind of melts into the back. It's like, I, yeah, I really, I, I'm right now, I'm just, I just want to be with him. I just want to see him. I just want to do what he's called me to do. And there are so many people that God has said, will you do this for me? And it's like our hearts goes, yes, <laughs> regardless of the cost, yes. because we're so in love. Be beautiful. And yeah. that's you. That's <laughs> you. No, Sunny, that's you. You said, regardless of the cost, regardless yeah. of the cost, you have it, my yes. Yes. This uh, intimacy with God that he, he invites us to uh, is all about him as, and it's we, uh, entwine our lives with him we we have that opportunity to carry the glory of god mm, come on and it's an increasing 
weight of glory that we can carry. And you remember, Lisa, what the devil wanted. The glory. He wanted to be like God. Yeah. Yep. He, he wanted to be. And yet here is our God, king of the universe, creator of every, everything uh, that is inviting us to become like him by carrying his glory. Come on. Hallelujah. That is so good. And you know, when we, when we think about it, that Adam and Eve were clothed in his glory. Yes. Yes. They were clothed in his glory. That's why they didn't know that they were naked. Yes. Yes. He's the outraying of the divine. Jesus is. Woo! Come on. And he lives within us. And he says to you, arise, shine. Because the outraying of, of the divine lives within you. Mm. See, I keep going back to in Psalms where it says for the bright and shiny ones. Right? You know, where David talks about for the bright and shiny. I think that's the remnant. I really do. I think that's the remnant because now is our time to arise and shine. And I think, I don't, I don't think that, I think that there have been remnants in different generations. Oh, yes. And I don't think that, oh, the remnant is just that. No, I think that there have been remnants. Like in like in the seventies, you had the Jesus movement, and then you had the Welsh revivals, and you had all of these movements of God where people emerged out of their their just earthly earthly concerns, and they started to shine the light of the love of God, and that's what I really believe is coming. And I really believe, Sonny, that your book is going to help people to not only hear the Lord but to steward what He is saying. Yes, exactly. Well, that's said. so good. That is so good, Sonny. I was going to ask you if you would in mind if you if you felt led, if you would like to pray, if you would like to just pray for for some people, pray for the audience. Yes, it'd be my privilege and honor. Absolutely, Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that's uh, tuned into this show, touched by prayer, because they've experienced another divine appointment with you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving each one a, a taste of, of an intimacy with you that they can pursue that is deeper and, and more meaningful than they've ever experienced before. Because you're limitless. You're inexhaustible. And I just thank you, Lord, for drawing people to, to come to you in a more uh, intimate and personal way and that they'll uh, be carry your glory with them because they're uh, become more and more aware of your how you love them and of your wraparound presence to protect them so uh, lord i just send forth your uh, word of life that you said that wherever the river of life goes uh, it it brings life it brings healing and there's here people here in this audience that need healing emotional healing, financial healing, physical healing, all kinds of relationship healing. And yet uh, your river of life is flowing through them. And I, I, I hear your invitation to come in a little deeper, launch out into the deep you invite us. And I thank you, Lord, for sealing that on their hearts, that you are the God who answers by fire, and that you've started a fire within them, and now they have uh, a desire and a, an awareness that it's their job to maintain that fire and to keep a glow and burning with the spirit. So there's some here that uh, need to experience you in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And Father, I just thank you they'll open their mouths wide, and you said you would fill it. And I thank you, Lord, for... Uh, the working of the Holy Spirit in each one of our lives, for you will do well and finish all that you have begun. And to God be the glory. And we'll give you thanks in the name of all names, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. If you guys are interested, this is her book. Let's just go ahead and let's just pull this up so that you can see it. There you go. God's special invitation. How will you RSVP? So th this has been so awesome. Sunny, you are awesome. You are seriously awesome. This God is awesome. Will you let him shine through us? 
Absolutely. Awesome. He is awesome. He and he's so good. He is so good. Just when you just when you think just when you think that he can't be he can't be gooder, he becomes gooder. That's what I always say. He gets gooder. <laughs> He gets bitter each and every day, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, and if you guys are interested in getting Sunny's book, you can go over to sunnysbook.com. You can also go over, read the first chapter for free. If you are interested in following her, you can find her on her socials. You can find her on Touch by Prayer. And soon to be, soon to be, she's going to have a YouTube channel. So super excited about that because, man, you got a lot. You got a lot to share. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's been a joy and a blessing. Too. Absolutely. Hold tight. I'm going to say goodbye to you off air, but just hold tight for one second. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this has blessed you. Please make sure that you go and get Sunny's book. It, wasn't she fun? She was so much fun. Look at that. Look at that. A special invitation. How will you RSVP? And guess what? We, we're supposed to. We're supposed to RSVP. It's, it's the right thing to do. Tell him you're coming because he's waiting for you. Have a fantastic day. Keep me in prayer. I'm going to be traveling and uh, I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow.